Hi everybody, my name is Rakim Sabri. I am an author, financial coach, and consultant. And this show is called Financially Irresponsible with Rakim Sabri. In this pilot episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me before I take you on this whirlwind journey that discusses the intersection of personal finance, mental health, culture, and whatever other variables money influences. So again, my name is Rakim Sabri. I have over a decade of experience in financial services. I started back in 2011 working as a bank teller and I moved my way up through various branches within two different pretty large banks. Um, during the course of my tenure in the banking industry, I had to learn on the job a lot about the financial products and services that banks offer their clients. That learning deeply impacted me because my experience growing up, similar to many other people, was such that money was not discussed in the household. There was a certain taboo around money. And so when issues of personal finance did surface, it would usually be in a painful experience or an uncomfortable experience where we're having to decide between some variables that either you have or you don't have. As I grew in my knowledge and experience in the banking industry, I decided to take a personal interest in personal finance, starting with the popular book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, learning about the different kinds of ways to make money as a business owner, entrepreneur, investor, or nine to five employee. And as I learned different things, I would share those things with my community, the people that I grew up with, friends, family, often noticing that the information I would share with them would go over their heads. And so I became even more passionate about making sure that this education was delivered in a very equitable way. The issue with that, however, is that most approaches to personal finance do not acknowledge your mental health or your beliefs about money. They do not acknowledge race or your social economic status. And so the assumption that everybody is starting at an even or equal playing field often does more harm than good. In 2019, I delivered a TEDx talk on financial empowerment. And I, on the next day, I actually published my second book, Financially Irresponsible, where the title of this show came from. And within the text, Financially Irresponsible, the origin of, of using that title was A, to capture people's attention and make them kind of scratch their head and say, well, why, why would somebody who is a financial educator be talking about being financially irresponsible, but also B, to encourage people to take a look at their behaviors, their practices, their beliefs when it comes to money and make a real assessment around whether or not those things are financially responsible or financially irresponsible. Over the course of the last four years, um, I've learned and grown quite a lot within financial education, and I've decided to niche down into a very specific area of personal finance, and that is an emerging field of financial therapy and financial counseling. And so often when I say financial therapy, people are like, that, that exists? What is financial therapy? And I dive deeper into this concept of financial trauma that I'll often make reference to as the show progresses. Within uh, the world of financial therapy, one of the kind of points of contention, if you will, among mental health professionals and financial professionals is who can call themselves a financial therapist and what qualifies as financial therapy. And while I don't consider myself necessarily to be a financial therapist, I've certainly been referred to as a financial therapist in addition to a variety of different titles that could or could not be true um, within the profession. 
So today I'm here as an author, a columnist, and a financial coach, which gives me a little bit of latitude in the topics that I can discuss, gives me differing perspectives in the way to approach those topics, and gives me a little bit of credibility to talk about these things backed by knowledge, credentials, and experience. So before I get going into Financially Irresponsible with Rakim Sabri, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and I hope that you continue to tune in as the show rolls out. To start, I want to define financial trauma for you. And financial trauma is any instance observed or experienced that has a negative impact on the way that you view, interact with, or believe about money. And so there is a sense of gatekeeping that exists around the word trauma and its use, particularly as applied to our personal finances, because many people view trauma as something so much more substantial than being in credit card debt or filing for bankruptcy or maybe experiencing homelessness. And the way that I define financial trauma it allows for a spectrum to exist where small or little t trauma instances like seeing advice on social media around what stock or crypto coin you should invest in has a negative impact on whether or not you choose to invest in the future and big t trauma or, or large t trauma around situations like being laid off or fired experiencing bankruptcy or a repossession experiences with sustained poverty or food insecurity all exist within the realm of the spectrum in financial trauma. And the reason why I decided to focus and hone in on financial trauma is um, interestingly and funny enough because I thought that I created the term financial trauma, not realizing that it existed well before I started even learning about money. And so I've gotten uh, acquainted with other professionals in the financial therapy world, financial psychologists, financial therapists, financial planners, everybody in between to kind of find some middle ground around how do we define you know this phenomenon and within this very muddy spectrum of experiences that people have, and how do we treat individuals who are impacted by this trauma? I have come up with a framework that makes reference to the three E's. And within that framework, I talk about my own experiences with financial trauma and the things that I've done and realized have worked to overcome financial trauma. And so a general rule of thumb as we talk about personal finance and we talk about money is that money impacts everybody differently. And so personal finance is personal. You will hear that mantra sung from the clouds from anybody who teaches about money or personal finances because each individual circumstance is going to influence what we believe about money, how we use money, uh, what we believe is possible for ourselves with money, et cetera, et cetera. And so there is no hard and fast rule around how you should approach dealing with the money um, that you make or the mentality that you have as it relates to the money that you make. But certainly there are frameworks that exist that can guide you and you can pull from all of the greats or the popular people to come up with your own financial plan. And so the three E's are exposure, education, and execution. Exposure being the first, realizing that something is possible. And so if you grew up in a situation where your family rented an apartment for your whole life, and all you believed about living was paying rent, and you suddenly come across somebody who owns property that is exposure to a new way, that is exposure to something that is different. And within that exposure, maybe it might trigger a desire within you to learn more about how to accomplish that feat that you realize somebody else accomplished. Exposure is huge 
on this framework because if you don't know that it exists, you may never decide to aspire to accomplish that thing. And on the other hand, if all you know is what you're exposed to, then you probably will repeat cycles, whether they are harmful or harmless, around your personal finances. The second E is education. And education is important because once you realize that something is possible and you decide for yourself, hey, I want to do this thing. I want this thing in my own life. I want to accomplish whatever the shiny accomplishment is, whether that is having an 850 credit score, or buying real estate or investing for retirement, whatever the accomplishment is, once you realize that it's possible, now you have to figure out how do I create smart goals so that I can take steps towards making this thing possible for me. And within that framework around education, certainly there are books to be read, podcasts to be listened to, interviews and conferences to watch and attend, conversations that you can have with mentors. There are so many different avenues for understanding how to get educated on whatever the specific area that you're focused on. And with financial literacy, because it covers such a broad approach to money, whether that be from an investing perspective, a credit building or management perspective, debt management and elimination, saving, budgeting, bank products and services, the, the whole gambit, it's important to understand not only that these things exist, but how to properly use these things in line with what your goals are, what your values are, and where you are currently in comparison to where it is that you would like to be. And so an example of this might include seeing the friend that owned real estate while you rented your whole life and asking the friend, hey, what are the steps that you took to accomplish that feat? How can I duplicate your success in owning real estate? And it starts with that first ask, but certainly you have to take steps towards implementing the things that you've learned. And that is where the last E comes in, the execution. Now execution is probably the hardest of the framework to accomplish because with execution, it's more than just the formula of figuring out the one plus one equals two of how to solve this equation. The execution involves actually doing the work. And it is in this phase where you may experience or resurface traumas, financial traumas that you've experienced and you might have a difficult time overcoming that trauma because of its prevalence in your life. A fun fact, most of our beliefs about money are cemented by the time we are seven years old. So if you think about all of the time that exists between seven years old and when you start making money, whatever that is, whether that's 14, 15, 16, 21, all the way up until the time that you become an independent adult with your own place, your own car, your own bills, your own responsibilities, undoing years and years and years of programming and reinforced beliefs is no easy task. And certainly it's not something that will be accomplished overnight. But again, that education and that exposure help to prime your mind to start believing and um, approaching these goals with a different perspective and maybe a different level of enthusiasm and energy so that when you do get to the execution phase, even if those traumas surface, you can work through them. Now, this framework is a framework that is intimate and dear to me. You probably won't hear anybody else talk about the three E's in the way that I talk about it, but certainly there are iterations of this framework that exist in other spaces. And the reason why I use the examples that I use is because those examples are quite literally the examples of my own experience. I grew up in an apartment. My mom had section eight. We had food stamps. I thought when I became an independent adult, that I would go out and repeat this cycle. It wasn't until I met somebody 
who owned real estate, who was within the same kind of age bracket that I was in, that I said, hey, this is something that's possible. How do I make this thing possible for me? And taking the steps to understand, to learn, to unlearn, and then ultimately to pull the trigger, I was able to purchase real estate before 30 using the same framework that I'm talking to you about right now. And so when we apply this framework across the broad spectrum of our experiences, the broad spectrum of the variables that exist from an income perspective, from an education perspective, from a race perspective, from a mental health perspective, we can start to see similarities and not the experiences necessarily, but the approach to layering that education, that exposure, that execution to get the outcomes that we want to accomplish. And so this show is going to talk through my journey. Um, we're going to have guests where we're going to talk through their journeys, their experiences, their backgrounds and expertise and deliver a different approach to money than what you probably see on normal programming or in books, podcasts, lectures, etc. And so I'm super excited to be embarking on this journey with you all. And I'm super excited for you to come back as a returning viewer time after time after time again. And so for more information on me, the work that I'm doing, you can visit my website at www.rakimsabri.com and that is my name, R-A-H-K-I-M-S-A-B-R-E-E.com where I'll be sharing more about these topics, about my book, about the work that I do in the community and certainly the work that I do online. Outside of that, this has been an episode of the first episode, the pilot episode of Financially Irresponsible with Rakim Sabri, and I'll see you guys next time. Nick Augustino right here at the East Side Restaurant. We always have the complete full dinner menu. Knockwurst, bratwurst, sour broughton, potato pancakes, red cabbage, rice pudding, cream pies, all the desserts that Germany had to offer. I always do something different. Yes, I do. I brought seafood to the beer garden at the East Side Restaurant. East Side Restaurant, your German destination restaurant in Connecticut. Tiggy talking, tiggy talking, hoi, hoi, hoi. I'm your host, Kurt Barwis. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time.